Welcome to another episode of the Spone Train Podcast. Hi, Janet. How are you? Good to see you this morning. Good to see you too. So we met at the National Guild of Hypnotists Convention and everyone said, you have to meet the tree lady. And I thought, what the hell is a tree lady? <laughs> and then I met you and I kind of uncovered, well, you, you, know, you showed me uh, your tree technique that you use, which we're going to get into today. Uh, and you and I connected right off the bat. We had a lot in common and um, really good vibe. So I'm super glad to have you on. Um, today we're going to talk you. about your tree technique. So basically, um, there are no good or bad trees and no artistic ability is needed. But when you draw a tree, it tells me a lot about your personality. Just like the FBI uses handwriting analysis to tell you people about their personality, the tree does the same thing without any words, without any writing. And nowadays, with kids not learning to write script, it's going to be really hard for handwriting analysts to analyze people's handwriting without script. The good thing about drawing a tree, projective imaging, has been around for a really, really long time. I did not invent anything. I did not make up anything. All I did was take a system make it into eight steps so that anybody that reads your tree will come up with the same response so that there's no guessing. So the, the process is that someone draws a tree and what their tree conveys is their subconscious programs, their beliefs, all of those things come out just like they would in handwriting analysis or graphology, right? And what That's you exactly right. What you refer to is in, in graphology, we analyze cursive letters. And since we're not doing cursive anymore, the tree might overtake that as the way to analyze what's going on in someone's subconscious program. So before we get into what things mean in any details, let's talk about uh, a little bit about the procedure. So what's, what's someone going to do when they, when they come to you maybe for coaching, you're going to have them just draw a tree. What are the, what are the boundaries? So basically when people come to me, they actually draw four trees. They draw their own tree. And the areas of their life, health, wealth, self, others, and spiritually, where they're having relationship issues. So not only does your tree tell you about your relationship with yourself, but it tells you about your relationship in those other areas. So depending on what people need to work on or what they're interested in learning their like natural tendencies, because remember, there's no good or bad trees. So that's the trees that I have them draw. So for example, if somebody is having like financial issues and they can't seem to work through them, they draw their tree and then they draw a money tree. And then a lot of times, depending on where their tree is located, I have them draw the money tree of your mom or your dad or the strongest influence in your life because that's where it's getting from. A lot of our beliefs are learned from way back, from the beginning, from things that our parents told us. So the way you view your parents' tree is you've adapted their beliefs about money. And you've our also, mind, yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you've also start. adapted their beliefs about pain and other things. Yeah, and our mind works in metaphors, right? I, I, I think I told you I do this cube technique where I have people visualize a, a cube and a desert and all these things, and their beliefs about themselves, about their partner, about their problems, all are created in, in representations from the mind in pictures, and the tree's the same way. And so there's different facets of the tree that reveal different parts about us and our history and our beliefs. And so when you have people draw those trees for every area, you get a shot at knowing exactly what's going on in their head and, you know, many people say, oh, it's cold reading, right? Where you kind of take a, analyze micro movements in somebody or their tone or their expression, but you're doing this without meeting anyone. So that can't be part of it, right? Right. It doesn't really have um, psychiatrists, psychologists, other health professionals send me trees and I never see the person. I only see the facts. <clears throat> so, or the, um, I get a text, but it doesn't matter whether I see the person or not. The key in tree reading is when in doubt, leave it out. So if you, I might think it's an apple, but they're really trying to draw a bird, I would be guessing wrong. The tree doesn't make a mistake, but I could be, because I don't see the person, I could be thinking that an apple is a leaf, or an apple is a bird, or an apple is something, 
but it really was just meant to be an apple. So sometimes you need clarification on little things like that. But basically, the tree tells it all. So you can get down, and, and the key with this is you can get down to somebody's uh, root issue. You know, Literally, the their, roots, their root yeah. issue. Um, or how they're branching out or those things. Yeah, yes. very quickly without having to do long psychotherapeutic sessions, right? That's exactly right. You actually get to the root cause pretty quickly. So before we have people draw their trees, how did you get into this technique? So um, basically, I don't, you know, I never know if the tree found me or I found the tree. I don't know that answer. But I was a um, TMJ specialist. I was a dentist. My practice was limited to headaches, facial pain, and TMJ disorders. And there was an emotional component, that emotional component that wasn't really full healing. And I was searching for ways to help people emotionally, but I'm just not the kind of person that really wants to hear your issues. I'm like, oh, I can't listen. <laughs> so I became a hypnotist, and at that session, I was very interested before I became a hypnotist in art therapy and what it revealed. And then one night there was a class on tree reading at the NGH, and it was kind of at a very weird time, but I went and that was it. I was totally taken by this method will really help my patients tremendously. And that's when I started and I did a lot of research to find out, being, being a dentist, I'm more from a scientific background, even mm -hmm. though there's a lot of spiritual, spirituality to me. And I got all the books I can find on this, this art, the art of tree reading. And then what I did is I made it into an eight step process so that it was repeatable. And that's my big gift to tree reading is I made it into eight steps and I made it into an app so people would know that it wasn't my intuitive ways. So you kind of took it from an art and you made it more scientific. Well, that's what I hope you would say. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. So I, I think so. All right. So in a moment, I'm going to have people shut this off and go draw a tree because we're going to talk about the attributes that show up and I don't want that to skew what they draw. So when they go draw a tree, what are the parameters? What are the guidelines? Well, just draw a rectangle box and then draw your tree. You don't necessarily have to put the, your tree in the box, but I need a box to set me up so that I know where your tree is in relation to the box, in the box, out of the box, whatever, but I, I can't do it without a box. Okay, so draw a box and then draw a tree. Should we have them just draw the tree of themselves, their own tree? Well, that's a good way to start. Okay, so we'll start with that. So if you're listening to this, Shut this off so we don't skew your, your representation of your tree. Draw a box and then draw your tree. And then when you're done with that, come back and we'll start to talk about the attributes that, of yourself that show up in your tree. Perfect. All right. So now let's talk about some of the attributes and how they show up. And I have your handy dandy pen here, which is kind of the shortcut, the guidelines on uh, the parts of the self that show up in representations of the tree. So what are some of the the main things that you look at when you're analyzing a tree. Okay, so I begin with location. Is the tree in the center? Is it left of center? Is it right of center? So the way that you find out, I have a tree right in front of me, is you normally fold it in half. This is not a foldable paper, but you fold it in half and see where the tree lies. If it lies on the left side of the, the left side of the page, it means that your mom or a female was a big influence in your life. If it's drawn on the right side of the page, it means that your dad or a male figure was um, a very strong influence. Now, let's just clarify this because this is always a big thing, is that influence doesn't mean behavior. So if I say to you, wow, your mom was a big influence in your life, people say to me, oh my God, I'm nothing like my mom. And that's the key here. Your behavior could be totally different than your mom or your dad or your aunt or your sister or your brother, but the influence is there because you drew the tree. I didn't draw the tree. I didn't locate it where I located it. It's there. If your tree is drawn right in the center 
and it it's like not on the baseline and it's in the middle of the box that means that you like freedom the higher up you tree the, the higher up it, away from the baseline the more that you like freedom if your tree is very very small on the bottom and you're a middle child it just means that you're a middle child middle children draw boxes in a location that's pretty consistent with a middle child you when you meet somebody that has a really big personality and they draw this little itsy bitsy tree and you say to them are you a middle child they're like yeah how'd you know that because they drew a tree that doesn't reflect where they stand in the forest they mm. stand tall and have a big presence but when they draw their own tree it's usually very small fascinating so one one thing you mentioned was the left and the right side which coincides with reiki and i don't know if you've studied reiki but generally the left is feminine and the right is masculine and i don't know if there's some overlap there but that's that's an interesting correlation I think everything is, I think none of these systems work by themselves. Right. I think that they're all, the reason they've been around so long is that they're, they're all right in their own way. And so it makes sense that Reiki does it, a few other things do it, the same thing with the male and the female. The other thing about left and right is the left side of the page is the past and the right side of the page is the future. So one time I was on a plane and I read trees everywhere and anywhere if somebody will just draw me a tree so I was sitting next to this little boy and his dad so the little boy drew me a tree and I don't usually read children's trees because they're really different than um, adult trees and they need to be read differently but he kind of was like getting bored so I said to him oh just draw me a tree so he drew me a tree and you know it was an interesting tree and then he says well can my dad draw a tree so the dad draws the tree now the flight was about two hours and 15 minutes the dad was on his phone on his ipad on his thing the whole time not engaging with the child at all and the dad's tree was a hundred percent on the right on the right side of the page so i just said to the dad wow maybe you need to stop and smell the roses and stop worrying about the future and the little boy out of the mouth of babes says i told you dad you have to play <laughs> with me now and it was just so funny it was like in the tree and the little boy like confirmed that the dad was only focused on the future mm, wow so so talk about the size of the tree so i know when i do the cube if someone's cube is large generally that's kind of their self-image or at least their ego, their presentation to the world, right? Uh, how, does the, how does the tree size affect what's in their subconscious? Well, I think the bigger thing is if, they, if the tree, like this one, let me just show it, can you see that? Yes. So it's outside of the box, the box ends and the tree keeps going. That's the tree of a people pleaser. They wanna help the world. They say yes when they should say, one minute, I'll get back to you. So, you know, I like people, pe I love people pleasing personalities. I'm one. And so I know those are the people to ask. So when you're asking someone for help and there are people pleaser, they're going to say yes automatically. So that's one thing that you can find. Another thing is, is if someone draws a ground line, they like a daily routine. Mm. So when you're scheduling people in your practice and they drew a ground line, that's the kind of person that likes to come in every week, Monday, 10 a.m., their regular time. They like the routine of it. If you find someone whose tree has no ground line, you can say to them, well, what time do you want to come in this week? Because this week it's going to be one. Next week it'll be two. It, it's different. And if you say to them, how about if you come in every day at 10, every week at 10, they'll be like, no, 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 no. I, I can't commit to that. That's me. That's me for sure. I didn't have a ground line. So I think the, the, there's so many levels of benefits of tree reading because in every aspect of our lives, we have limiting beliefs that are holding us back in that area, mm -hmm. in all of our relationships. And basically everything is a relationship. Your relationship with coffee, your relationship with people, your relationship with your car. It's all about relationships. And when you draw the, the tree, you get to see your relationship and how you react 
to those things. I think at the beginning, when I first learned tree reading 15 years ago, my patients used to say to me, oh my God, can I draw my, can you read my boyfriend's tree? And then the boyfriend would draw the tree or the girlfriend would draw the tree and the person would not really relate to it because it's how the, the boyfriend or the girlfriend saw themselves. So now it's all about you draw the tree and you also draw the tree of your boyfriend because it's how you see their tree that matters. It's not how, it's how they occur to you. Yeah. We all have, our, we all have our own perceptual filters, right? Yeah, and so it's really interesting. So I call the family the woods, the people that are in your woods. Those are those few trees like right around you. And the forest is your community and the workforce is your jungle. Because you really isn't the same on a lot of levels. Very cool. All right, so when someone has a, a hardship in their life or a trauma, how does that show up in their tree? It shows up as a knot hole. So the darker, the more dark in the knot hole, the more not self-forgiving you are at this moment, and the more effect it's having on your life. So a knot hole. Not only I can tell you when the trauma happened because the trunk of the tree serves as a timeline. So the higher up, the more recent, and the lower, the younger they were. Exactly. And what's so interesting about tree reading is that I have done tree reading on people that do not speak a word of English. I have done tree reading on people that have only seen palm trees their whole life. And it doesn't matter. The tree reveals subconsciously, they know what a pine tree looks like. I don't know how that's possible. They've never seen it maybe on TV. But I was surprised. I read the tree of 100 people that live in Jamaica that have never left the island. And they drew winter trees. They've never seen a winter tree, but they drew winter trees because their personality reflects a very honest, vulnerable kind of person. Wow. So let's talk about some of the other components, the roots, the branches, the leaves, the, uh, the trunk. So how do, what do the roots mean? I know we already talked about the baseline, um, but, but deep so roots, the shallow roots, roots. I mean, when you think about it, the roots show you your subconscious, your instinctual level, and how you're grounded, your family life. Like, what are you grounded in? The roots are exactly what you think. The trunk is your emotional now. How are you, how are you standing up facing the world? And the branches are how you're branching out. I mean, it's not like rocket science mm -hmm. here, what things stand for. And the weather and the seasons and what you draw in the tree is all outside information, additional objects that you use to define who you are. A wow. giant sun is a really optimistic person. A really giant sun is overly optimistic. People that draw clouds overhead it's just what you think it is. They can't see clearly. It's fairly cloudy up there. So what do the seasons mean? Does someone that have a, a bear tree in the winter or, you know, a pine tree in the winter versus a, a spring tree that's got flowers? What's the, what do those the seasons entail? So people that draw a winter tree are really, really honest. They really like to help community. And what you see with winter people is what you get. It's just like the leaves are not protecting them. What you see is what you get. They're really honest. A summer tree, you know, if they draw apples or a lot of leaves, they're in full bloom right now. This is it. They're rocking and rolling. They're in full bloom. Um, a pine tree grows all year, even though, so they're very goal-oriented. They don't let their outside environment affect them towards their goal. They're goal-oriented people. They're going to get there whether they, it's winter, summer, spring, or fall. And a fall tree with the leaves falling usually means a person that's been through a hardship and they're resilient. The leaves are falling, but they are not dead. <laughs> it's not a dead tree. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. So, all of these subconscious programs show up. Uh, any other factors in a tree that someone that's listening to this that, have, that has drawn a tree that we're missing out on? Anything that we should include? I think one of the things that's really important, and that's why I use this as my sample, if you can see this tree, is all of these inner curlicues. 
it's this is the worry tree and I feel as though right now with 24 hour day news the internet staying connected every minute instant ter instant terror reports people are more worried and you're seeing more and more worry trees with those inner circles every time so for people that are just listening there's a tree with the the leaves uh, the circumference of the the tree leaves are wrapped around each other like a curly cue uh, in several circles and so that is that kind of imply like graphology that entanglement where we're entangled and worried with with other external stimulus I think I think it's in your head I don't know if it's external as much as if you're a worrier you're a worrier your thoughts are ruminating in your head depending on how many inner circles you have okay so the more inner circles the more worry the more in the circles, the more worried because those thoughts are just going round and round and round. Wow. So I know when, when we analyzed my tree, uh, the roots and the, the branches, they weren't closed off. There were often a lot of open-ended things. And, and you told me that that could mean that I have a lot of projects that I start and don't finish. Uh, and that was definitely rang true for me. So basically, I don't give advice, but like what I try to do is offer strategies because there's no good and bad trees. That works for you. And basically, the strategy would be to leave a post-it note on your project so that you know what you have to do when you get back to it so you're not wasting time. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal of tree reading. It's to make you aware, not judgment, no judgment here, make you aware of this characteristic that you have and how to make it work for you. Because... You might have a lot of open projects, but you start a lot of things and you're really creative. But if you realize that, you know what, I can't afford to waste any more time, so let me put a post-it note here that when I come back to this, I'm going to start with line six, page 20, and move on from there. So I think the goal of tree reading and the goal of any self-help program is to become the best you. Not to make a new you, a different you, or just to take who you are and bring out the best of each one of us. And I think that's the goal of tree reading, is to just say, you know what? If this is working for you, okay. Like if you drew this, if you drew like seven black and knot holes, maybe you're like wasting energy on those things and maybe a little forgiveness program would be a good thing for you. And I think that that's what the key here is. There's no right or wrong. There's no good tree. There's no bad tree. There's just making you the best, just the best you can be and making your relationships not like work because you got rid of old things that were clogging you up so that you can become wealthy and and have a good relationship with money and not let those old dead branches as we say prevent you from being your best self from growing and i love that idea of no judgment i think judgment is affects everything it screws everything up and when you can look at who you are and your strengths and your weaknesses without judgment you can find a, a clear path forward and you can, like you said, implement some of those strategies to make a better life for yourself. <clears throat> and, and one thing that you and I talked about in uh, graphology, there's something called graphotherapy where you start writing with different characteristics and pretty soon those characteristics will show up as your subconscious programs, right? Like if you do a, a taller T with a, a, more, uh, a more robust T bar, you'll be more confident in the world. Does the same thing apply with drawing trees? You know, I think it does, but I don't know about it. I'm going to be perfectly honest. People have asked me that many, many times. Can you change the way you um, draw your tree? So if your tree is all the way on the left side and you start drawing in the middle, are you coming more into who you are? If you draw a ground line and on this time you leave it out, are you going to be more flexible? I don't know the answer to that because it's not like a repetitive kind of thing. Like, are you just going to draw a hundred trees until you get the, get it centered? Right. I'm not really sure. I think there's probably better ways to um, use neuroplasticity in your life than moving your tree three inches to the center <laughs> and drawing and, it and and redrawing it a hundred times. Like, I think that would be hard. But I think the key that tree reading does offer is that it's about your relationships. And you could see how your relationship with yourself is different than your relationship with your children, with your spouse, with somebody else, how your relationship with money, how your relationship spiritually is, how your relationship is with your health. I think those are the things you could become aware of in tree reading and use those. And then 
use other methods, maybe self-hypnosis, maybe hypnosis to make the more um, like transformational kind of action. Do you ever do tree work with trances? I don't. Okay. Interesting. Um, very cool. So tell us, I know you've done a lot of famous people. Uh, there's probably, you probably don't want to talk about what exactly their tree said, but talk about some of your experiences working with famous people and maybe some surprises that came up. So um, I've read the trees of a lot of famous people. And the one thing that always surprises me is that what you see and what people's talents are is not necessarily what their view of themselves or personal fears are or personal strengths are or things that happened to them and how that was affected. I was really, I used to be really a, a lecture um, at a college and the person that spoke was so accomplished, so unbelievably strong, dealt with so many obstacles. So afterwards I said, could you just draw me a tree? <laughs> and the tree was not at all what I expected. I, I just was so shocked because here I was guessing that she was going to draw me this one kind of tree and then it wasn't. The other thing is, is that um, I went to, I read, I do a lot of charity events where I read trees for charity events um, during natural disasters to replant trees. Like when there are forest fires or things mm -hmm. like people bring me in. And um, what I found out at these different events is that when you meet somebody, you are seeing one side of them, the, like the mask that they're showing. When they do a tree, it's the inner workings of this person with no mask. Mm -hmm. And you have to be careful how you say things because the tree is not supposed to be judgmental but yet certain words carry <clears throat> negative energy. So for example, one person was very stubborn and I used the word stubborn. Oh my God, they were beyond insulted and so was everybody in their family. <laughs> and the truth is they were stubborn. And of course the tree was right because the tree doesn't make the mistake. I can make a mistake, but the tree doesn't. And nobody wanted to see that part of this person. And one time at an event in South Carolina, they drew me a tree that showed that they have very black and white thinking that the gray area is different. People that don't like to think about the gray area, they don't want you to uncover that about them because they think this is the way it should be and the gray area is woo-woo. So I've learned things like that. Um, I think the thing to remember is that we're all doing the best we can. Mm -hmm in our life, we hope. And the tree is just an opportunity for you to say, you know what? This is what's really great about me. There's no bad tree. And just be the best tree you could be. A pine tree never wants to be an oak tree. It's a pine tree. You know, and now we live in a society where we all want to be seedlings, little young people, even when you get older. Like, I think the tree reflects that. I think that we live in a society where certain characteristics are more are beneficial but when people don't know the system and they draw me an honest tree and they're not trying to manipulate me then I get to see what they're really about and what they're really thinking people have tried to manipulate me a lot of times the people that manipulated me it was just because they were trying to protect themselves mm -hmm. and now I know that because I've done it enough time and then at the end the person that try to manipulate me usually comes to me to try to get me to read the tree in private afterwards but I feel like you tried to manipulate me sorry I won't read your tree if you try to embarrass me in front of the crowd yeah right well it's it's you know meeting you and learning this was just another reminder of how many different facets there are to understand ourselves to move forward in life uh, and this was a really cool one because you know I understood similar principles but to see you read a tree just like that and see somebody's eyes light up when you uh, revealed some of the characteristics about them was very cool.
and then to understand how to apply it to coaching. And, and, you know, I love the concept of not judging yourself and, and using your strengths and not trying to become an oak tree if you're a pine tree. Right. And I think that's really hard to do because um, we're so tied into like people's lives with all the social media and you think other people's lives are just so amazing. And then all of a sudden somebody that's really famous, I got to meet them and then they drew, I draw their tree. Somebody really famous. I don't want to mention any names. Every time I see him, he's like, okay, could you just read my tree every time? And I mean, in every outward way, he is so successful and he draws me the same tree. It never changes. It's why it's so funny to me because it never changes. This tree is still the same that he drew me 15, 10 years ago. Wow. So I think that um, like money could change, your life could change, but to really change your self-talk and really change your beliefs about yourself and the influences that have been with you your whole life, that doesn't go quickly. Right. And a lot of times people just say to me, oh, I'm not like that anymore. I'm thinking, well, you drew the tree today. Obviously you are. <laughs> so um, I think sometimes it takes time to, to catch up to who you see yourself as. And I think that when you envision your future or you envision yourself, that is like such a critical thing to really change that vision to start. Because that picture, really, your subconscious mind is running all the programs no matter how much you think it isn't, your subconscious mind, your imagination is running them. So this way you get to really see what your imagination is saying. It's like uh, seeing how the sausage is made, right? It's not always, <laughs> it's not always pretty. <laughs> it's not, no, it's not. But you know what? It's delicious in the end. That's right. That's right. Well, Janet, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, in, a, in a minute, we'll share you know, how, how people can get a hold of you if they want to do tree reading, if they want to learn it. Uh, in the meantime, is there anything else that you want to address that we've skipped over? No, I think that the main thing is, is that there's no judgment. There mm -hmm. is no judgment. And the less we can like view ourselves from a, a more non-judgmental -judge, position, the easier it will be and the less pressure we're going to be under to be our best selves. And I think that's my message. Absolutely. I love that. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, if they want to learn tree reading or consult with you, do coaching, how can they get a hold of you? I think that the best way to get a hold of me is to go on my Facebook page, um, Janet Crane, C-R-A-I-N, or go on Facebook hashtag um, Coffee Time with Janet all pushed together. But if you friend me on Facebook, that's the best way. Or you can go to my website, JanetCrane.com. Either way, you can get in touch with me. There's a box to fill out there. And that's the best way to get me in person. And my goal is to really train a lot of people to be basic tree readers and then move on to advanced tree readers because I think that nowadays we all really need a little bit of self-love, a little bit of self-care. And if you look at it through the eyes of the tree, it's easier than the emotional baggage that you carry otherwise. I love that. I love that. And you mentioned that you had an app as well, right? How can, what's the app called? Oh, the app is called Tree Reading. Okay. It's on iTunes and at the Android Play, at the Play Store. It's 99 cents and all the profits go to the National Arbor Day Foundation to plant trees around the world. It's my little gift to the world to plant trees through the app and help people get to know their, their true tree self. Very cool. I actually haven't downloaded that yet, so I will do that now, and we'll put links for all of this in the show notes. Uh, Janet, it's been a pleasure. I can't wait to see you at a future event. I'm, I'm hoping in the near future. Perfect. Bye. Nice Thanks to meet so you all. We'll talk soon. All right, bye. bye.